bertemu kembali dalam bisnes awani. Kementerian Perdagangan Antarabangsa dan Industri MITI memberi jaminan walaupun pasaran pemerolehan kerajaan akan dibuka pada tahap tertentu melalui PPA ia tetap akan melindungi pemegang termasuk perlindungan yang sesama untuk PKS. Meskipun begitu, gambaran sebenar di dalam klosa rundingan TPPA masih samar-samar dan pemain industri kini meletakkan sandaran kepada kerajaan untuk terus mengambil kira kepentingan semua pihak. Justru menjelang pusingan ke-19 rundingan TPPA di Brunei Darussalam minggu ini bersama kami di studio adalah wakil daripada bantah TPPA iaitu pengasas bersama Namanya Azlan Nawang dan Ketua Pegawai Eksekutif Majlis Tindakan Ekonomi Melayu MTM Muhammad Nizam Mashawel. Welcome Nizam so Azlan to our studio here today and uh, this is in conjunction with the upcoming 19th round of uh, TPPA negotiations in Brunei Darussalam. And last week as reported MITI has came out with a statement uh, saying that um, reinforcing the fact that the level of engagement um, between stakeholders and also the government will be increased in conjunction with the TPPA so that all members and also those who are important in the negotiation their views and points will be taken into consideration and after all the efforts by Banta TPPA um, the memorandums open letters to cabinet ministers what's the um, engagement level like currently is it satisfactory Maybe um, Nizam would like to start okay, first. Okay, uh, I think the the start is th- we are we are getting different messaging from uh, both the government and also in the international negotiation. I think the fear of the civil society, uh, the industries mm-hmm. right now, because people are hearing that Brunei is the last official negotiation, which means they w- the the twelve country will not meet again after Brunei. There will probably be a, a bilateral negotiation, discussions among the countries, mm-hmm. but this will be the official round. But we were, we were, we were uh, informed, uh, there was uh, some kind of assurance given by, mm-hmm. by the min- Minister of MITI, uh, saying that no, the, the Brunei will not be the final uh, official negotiation. So this is important because as, as we know, the discussion, the discourse on TPPA had just started in Malaysia. So we need more engagement. There they, they need to be more consultation with mm-hmm. all the civil societies and the industry players for us not only to understand because what we see from the impacts of TPPA or the previous FTAs with the other countries, with US and the other countries, I think the the risk uh, to the, the Malaysian economy is at 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 uh, at, uh, at the junctions. And uh, okay, you have raised a very interesting fact, which is uh, most of the negotiations are still under secrecy. And um, let's talk about the in um, internal engagement between the members of Banta TPPA. If everything is under secrecy and um, there's no light on what are the clauses in the discussion, how has um, discussion been taking? place between the members of Banta TPPA? At the moment, uh, we, we, I must say that we have a very close-knit uh, within the Banta group, ni, Banta TPPA group, ni, we have a very close-knit uh, apa ni, solidarity uh, mm-hmm. among key, key coalition um, uh, ni, representing various industries and various interests. Uh, we are, I would say that we are ready to go, actually. And we, we must say that we applaud uh, the initiative by MITI, right? I think they have, uh, I believe, got the clearance from, from, the, from the cabinet. And I think it was reported that the cabinet is very keen on more transparency and engagement, right? And we've had two discussions with MITI uh, on, on the way forward towards a more structured engagement. Uh, and I think we have emphasized to MITI that the, this round, the engagement should be... Uh, more between the CSOs and, of course, business interests with the ministries direct. Mm-hmm. And uh, MITI should be just uh, be an onlooker you know, rather than be the, the, the driver of this mm-hmm. engagement because I think the, the concerns are molly, uh, uh, mostly can be addressed by, by the ministries. Mm-hmm. So this is what we're proposing, uh, a direct engagement with ministries. And we are concerned also that uh, what we, what we uh, the, the, the message that we got, or sorry, the, the impression we get from the reports on the cabinet position, uh, as was reported, it is as if min- most ministries are a bit blur on what's going on. You know? mm-hmm. We are concerned about that. 
it is it is possible there is there is a there is a breakdown in communication or something you know so the uh, our our interest is to pursue engagement with ministries produce a certain matrix of concerns and issues right and then from that point uh, to 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 bring in miti uh, for the negotiators to be able to put forth uh, to the to the various rounds of negotiation if it comes uh, mm -hmm. as it comes Right, Abanta, TPP, of course, is, has been very vocal in voicing out what, drawing out the red lines, and uh, you know what, what are the, um, what should be put out on the table, and what should not, what should be left out on the discussion itself. Of, of course, MTM as well, and it's, we're heading towards um, the 19th round in Brunei Darussalam. Do you think there's going to be a change in the dynamics of the negotiation, given the attention that has been brought up? I, I think one, one of the the issues here is also that, uh, as you mentioned about the secrecy part, I think. Uh, we we totally agree. We have not uh, given, been given the, the 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 text for us to discuss to 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 provide our opinions. But in the same while, I think what the, what the concerns that we are having right now is uh, from what we see from the previous FTA, you know, US FTAs with other countries. Their demands, their uh, their demands, their proposals are quite the same. It has not changed from the last how many FTAs that they have signed, especially the US. Uh, for instance, in the areas of uh, procurement, they have been asking a threshold which is very, very low, incompatible for, for the things to be implemented in the country. If you're looking at the Peru US FTA, for instance, the threshold for procurement is something like 25 million uh, or 7 million USD, which is quite 25 million. And what kind of project can be be, be well, implemented with such a project is very low. So, and in other areas also, IP, intellectual property. In uh, so the way that we are looking at right now, how does the government going to demand for something which is far fetched, far different from what has been proposed by big countries such as the US? So. For us, even though we are the tech is not being disclosed to us, but saying that we, we, we are in the dark is not quite true. We are very much uh, we very much understood what is there, what are the demands. It's just what is the national position. We are advising that we want to advise the government, we want to engage with the government for them to, to strengthen whatever position they have in various uh, issues. Okay, Anissa, we'll get back to that after this. We're going to go for a short break and uh, when we come back from the break, we're going to discuss about America's involvement and also how can negotiations be done on a level playing field, especially if you're being put up against um, economic powerhouses such as America and also Japan will be back. Dan uh, bisnes awal ni akan berhenti rehat seketika dan kita akan kembali nanti uh, masih lagi dengan perbincangan mengenai uh, rundingan TPPA menjelang yang kali ke-19 di Brunei Darussalam. Jangan ke mana-mana. Bertemu kembali dalam bisnes awal ini dan kami masih lagi uh, bercakap, uh, berbincang mengenai rundingan TPPA dan bersama kami di studio adalah uh, wakil pada bantah TPPA iaitu Azlan Awang dan uh, juga uh, Nizam Mashar dan uh, um, we're talking about the issue of America's involvement before the break. How intimidating is America's involvement in TPPA? I think the key issues right now, if you are looking at the uh, big superpower like like uh, trade powers like US, you know, coming into the the countries like us, they have a specific demand. Their their system, their economy is far different from us, mm -hmm. and their their readiness in terms of coming into the the negotiation is far far better than us. Uh, you no, know, they they have looked into the CBA in such a detail, the cost benefit analysis, to understand what can be negotiated and what can't be negotiated. But for us, I think we have not done that process, a uh, cost benefit analysis, to understand what are something that we can offer to our countries. For instance, I'm 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 very puzzled to the day. Uh, for instance, if you talk about agriculture product. Why are our oil palm, is, which is something very instrumental in our country for our economy, is not part something that we can offer? Because 
the US will not bow down in mm-hmm. terms of their agriculture subsidies. So in no way that we can penetrate the US market in terms of this. Yeah. That's going to give so them a competitive so advantage. So how can together? we agree? I'm taking examples you know, uh, in, uh, from Switzerland. What they have done, they have entered a negotiation between the US and they can they just simply saying that can you agree to negotiate it, to negotiate on this point? So in the first meeting they would say that you know they they will look at these issues and when once they say that uh, US say that oh we need comp- we cannot compromise on those issues so the, mm-hmm. the negotiations end because they are so ready they understood their economy and they they understood what areas mm-hmm. that they can negotiate and not to negotiate and it's also clearly now the issue here is not only about the matter of competitiveness but it's also on the matters of policies which might bring about mm-hmm. legal implications to us in the future and maybe Azmi might have something to say about that. Yeah. Apparently, n- nobody is really against free trade, uh, fair trade, you know. I think we are all pro-trade, you know. But uh, TPPA is a bit of an overkill, uh, which can kill, actually. Because historically, uh, you see, the, the Western countries, the Northern countries, they have always been dominating uh, the rest of the world, through firstly through military powers and then through uh, uh, what what is called debt. debt through debts, you know, by giving debts and then forcing people uh, upon upon uh, default, they will impose uh, conditions like the structural adjustment program under IMF, World Banks and so on. Then you have a period of free trade under the the gap years, and now is is uh, you can see it's a uh, it's a different generation of free trade. It's is what they call the new age, which actually does not does not really address the 21st century's problems. We have uh, we have a financial crisis, fi- financial instability, which TPPA does not address. Mm-hmm. In fact, it it uh, this allow people to address financial instabilities through capital control, not allowing pa- capital control, free flows and whatnot, right? Through deregulation, right? Under the uh, regulatory coherence, mm-hmm. um, you are not allowed uh, certain you you are uh, you are allowed only to regulate up to a certain point, right? And 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 uh, the the issue on sovereignty, right? On sovereignty, right? This is important. Under the investment chapter, you have what is called the FTE, the free uh, FET, fair and equitable treatment, right? That fair and equitable treatment essentially put put a stop to any new regulations and policies or laws. Why? Because once an investor comes into Malaysia, right? So for example, right? Then they came in when our policies and laws was at a certain level, right? Now, if you make new laws, then they will deem it as expropriation of their investment, reducing the viability of the investment, their turnover, their profit, and their, their, their revenues and whatnot. We can be sued by that. So just the FET alone, right, uh, reduces our policy space, reduces us to make any policies, laws, that will right. benefit public health, mm-hmm. public safety, and so on and so forth. Our you weight know, on our own decision is not just even an there in, in support of what Aslan is saying, you know, uh, the TPP itself uh, is pushing the compliance of the TPP. Uh, meaning so, you know, if you if you see the the experience in NAFTA, for instance, North North American Free Trade Agreement. You now, once the negotiation is be, is locked, uh, is, is 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 concluded, then companies. A foreign companies start suing other countries, mm-hmm. and the numbers of uh, of countries and the billions ringgit, in, a billion dollars involved is huge. Mm-hmm. So it pushed the countries to comply, even though you are talking about transition time, etc. And you know? so, so That's we have lesson we learn learned from. already. We have lesson right. learned already. Right. And why are we not learning from this kind of experience mm-hmm. from other countries? And, and uh, that brings me uh, to the next question. Uh, whereby we see in the Asia, um, there are also countries that have not raised. Uh, concerns or have not raised intention to join the TPPA, namely our Chinese dragon in Asia, which is, which is China. So, what is it that China is realizing from this TPPA that we are not? Yeah, basically, uh, some, some people misconceive to understand the, this TPPA because they say, oh, this is about competition, going out to the foreign markets and everything. But country like China, they are not into it because they they understand this is beyond trade. It's a regulatory mechanism that will lock in countries beyond trade issues. Yeah. And for ins- uh, and for me, from what I see, China will not come in because they will not agree on whatever proposals on the government procurement, on the uh, on intellectual property, which basically will cut off their own economic stability, their own economic model. 
which is an Asian model, which is closer to to what we are. Well, I'll, I'll have yeah, something. I, I think I think what's important about what the cabinet say or what's reported from the uh, statement from the cabinet that we must agree on the most favourable terms to the country. Yes. Like China, they have their national objectives, they have their national strategies, right? We we also have our national strategies and objectives, right? I think our participation or non-participation should be decided by those. Mm-hmm. not by others we should not be you know just following the trends you know yeah. uh, if it's in our national interest right considering all the con- the, 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 the risks and issues and uh, we should join but if it is against so this is the thing uh, what was what was suggested was to carry out a national interest analysis right I think this is important maybe this is the time to revisit uh, what what probably have been been uh, you know forgotten you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, we should revisit what is actually our national objective. We have our rakyat didahulukan. Are we mendahuluikan uh, rakyat kita? Because, because mm-hmm. is, will there be real direct benefits to the rakyat as far as this is concerned? Mm-hmm. If it's just about profit-driven policies, profit-driven trade agreements, right? Mm-hmm. Which only will benefit uh, a few, right? Okay. That it is, it is not... Uh, Right, yeah, okay, so this is probably my last um, question uh, to both of you very briefly, but we have about 15 minutes. Um, very briefly, um, we cannot deny the fact that trade and investment is a backbone of our economy. Moving forward, if we're going to dismiss TPPA, our involvement in TPPA, what's going to be the a better alternative to that? I think what has been proven by the country, you know, without the TPPA, mm-hmm. we have been doing enormously good. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a lot of areas. Uh, for sure, there's a lot of areas of improvement. But this is typical for any nation. You know, so and what we should be focusing on is more on the regional part. Mm-hmm. For instance, right now we have AEC, right. Asian Economic Community. Mm-hmm. And building the community, building a single market as right. a single Asian market. Basically, what you're saying is we should look for countries who are going on the same pace as Malaysia, and then it's going to be easier for us to see eye to eye um, on that. Um, well, I guess that's all the time we have, you know, Nizam yeah. Aslam. It's a pleasure talking to both of you, and we'll keep in touch more in the future um, in regards to the after the 19th round of TPP in Brunei Darussalam. Nice talking to both of you. Pleasure meeting both of you. Dalam perayaan itu tadi, mahiri bisnes awani untuk jam ini. Saya Serena Maniklam teruskan setia bersama Astro Awani. Terus genap dimensi, salam hormat.